one of the reasons why our marriages are not working and I've been a victim of it is this. Watch this. Is this. My first marriage, I married at the age of 24 years. Now, at that age, I was an amateur. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I did it because I was told you have to marry so you don't sin. So I married, but I married as a boy. I was not a man. Now watch this. Boys don't marry. Because boys are amateur. Now hear me. Can I talk to you? The Bible said, For this cause shall a man, He didn't say a boy. A boy that is, A man is one that is well developed mentally emotionally physically psychologically spiritually a man is one that have come of age and understand responsibility number two men marry for purpose boys marry for sex the bible said for this cause or purpose shall a man not a boy boys are dependent men are independent say I hear you until you are independent of your father and your mother and you live on your own and you are paying your bills paying light bill water bill paying IRS net, and taking responsibility and keeping your house clean and neat and decent and knowing how to take care of your shoes and your socks you are not qualified to marry number two watch this the reason why a lot of women are not marrying is because watch this the bible never said he that finds a woman finds a good thing he said he that finds a wife so being a woman doesn't qualify you to marry you have to become a wife before you are qualified to marry somebody say talk to me watch this watch this esther was a woman and a virgin and attractive and beautiful among the one 127 providence of King Ahasuerus stretching from Ethiopia to India. She was the only woman that was chosen from among the 127 virgins. But watch this. She had to go through process first three months to teach her how to use spices on her body. Then another three months to teach her the different types, kinds of oil and the areas of the woman's body that you have to apply those oil three months. Six months preparation for one year, one day with the king. All she needed was one day with the king. And in order for her, to qualify to have acceptance for one day with the king she needed six months preparation for one night with the king what makes you think that you can go in a relationship forever happy after without preparation when it takes Esther six months preparation for one night with the king somebody say process sit down for two minutes i want you ladies and gentlemen to understand that until you go through process you know i was talking to i was talking to this gentleman the other day and when i was in america and he's done very well for himself and we're chatting and he was talking to me about his success in ministry and in life 
And I said to him, I said, I said, who's your father? Who's your spiritual father? Where did you come from? Who begot you? At whose feet did you study? Who laid hands on you? Who coached you? Who mentored you? He said, nobody. And I said, I'm afraid of you. I'm telling you. You see, you can never be a father and a good one if you haven't been fathered before. You don't know what it means to be a father. You can call yourself father and people can call you daddy, but you ain't no father because you've never been fathered. You can't command unless you've been commanded. You can't teach unless you've been taught. You can't lead unless you've been led. You can't have authority until you've been under authority. The centurion said, I'm a man under authority. And because I am under authority, I have authority. Listen, I don't care what your theology is and what you know and what your philosophy is and how successful you are and how many churches and money and mega minister you are. If you are not under authority, you don't have one. You don't. You are illegit and your authority is not biblical and legal. You may have power, you may have an anointing, you may be gifted, you may be articulate, you may understand doctrine, but you don't have authority. And the devil is not afraid of you. Because demons and devils are not afraid of anointings and giftings. And they don't care about power. They don't respect power, they don't respect anointing, they don't respect gifts. Because demons are anointed. Satan is an anointed cherry. So he himself has an anointing. He lost his place in heaven, but he didn't lose his giftings and anointings. Because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Say, I hear you. So the devil is not impressed with your gift or my gift. He's not impressed with anointing. Because he's anointed. But what demons are afraid of is authority. Because authority is delegated. So you can have power. You can have abilities. You can have capability. But you can't have authority. If you haven't been under authority. And if you are not under authority. You can't resist the devil. Until first you have submitted to the authority of Adonai. Unless you're under authority, you can't even resist the devil. There are rules of engagement. There are technicalities and there are regalities. And we must not allow anointings and giftings and success as it is defined by men to override the old landmarks and the principles of Elohim. The principles of God stands. Say, I hear you. And success, success from heavenly perspective or the way God defines success is different from the way we define success. True success is not how much money you have or the cars you have or the buildings you have built. Because if it is buildings that make men successful, then when you go to Chicago and you see properties in the city of Alexander Dowie, it lies in ruin. And the city of A. A. Allen in Tucson, Arizona lies in ruins. Success is not what you have. Success, as defined by God, is not how many people you have in your church or the amount of books you have written. Because even the books we write, we will be judged about the books we've written or we write based on the motives for which we wrote it. Whatever we do for God will be subjected to fire. So why we want to be successful, why we want a big church, a mega church, and why we want to run many services, is it because we love souls and we care about people going to hell and we truly love people and love souls and want to rescue them from hell or it's because we are competing with others and we want to prove a point or we want to be bigger than everybody else or we want to have tithes and offerings in our pocket god will judge our motives 
And the reason why I'm talking to you about process is because you are young. You have a better chance than me. And a better chance than some of us that have gone ahead of you. And I have a moral obligation to instruct you so you don't make the mistakes I made. 